Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Uh, this episode has been uh, bad. <laughs> I've been trying to like play this episode like a couple of times, and I've started it multiple times, and it is continually giving me troubles because of weird stuff where my like controller is desyncing. This is a relatively new controller, but I've had no problems with it before. But apparently, it's a Middle Earth Shadow of uh, Mordor problem, which I like. But anyway, back to more rat bag. Almost Sisyphean, you know? I love that his voice goes in and out. Hey, the Jar Jar Banks of the Middle Earth set helped us out a little bit. Talon is like so crazy anime sometimes. That shot really reminds me of uh, the prince in uh, Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. Or the dark prince in the uh, the third one, the two princes, whatever it was called. A training platform. Well, we'll see how the war chief soldiers do in the face of a true foe. Rattle a cage and bring out the beast. The beast. So yeah, I, I started this episode like three or four times. Uh, and I was just totally, totally unable to like get anything going because it would give me like keyboard prompts. What? Hey, that's not cool. But yeah, like it would give me. Like, it would say right click above these guys' head. This is. This episode has been so cursed. Like. Can I. Can I start from a checkpoint? For God's sakes. It's it's given me the option to leave the mission or just quit the whole game. I don't want to do either of those things. I just want to start from a checkpoint. Please. I just, this is, this is miserable. Okay. We'll just try this. But yeah, like, the PC port's been pretty good, but this is a really, really weird bug. Where, like, I can be playing the game with a controller, but there are certain very, very specific inputs that it wants me to do that, like, it doesn't let me go to hell. I have to start the whole thing over. Uh, I guess the weird like checkpoint system this game uses, of course, means that you couldn't do that. But like, God, it's a checkpoint system. They're in every single game. Like, I shouldn't have to use save states like an emulator. Sorry, this is a salty episode. Like. There's obviously been a lot of, like, freedom versus quality uh, when it comes to, like, PC gaming. Because, like, you're going to get way more freedom with a PC game. 
and it's going to take you an hour longer to run every game, you know? Like, there was an excellent bit on um, Pat Sterzat, a live stream I enjoy watching. Where Pat was talking about, um, where Pat played Kenshi. And then on the podcast that Pat... Really, guys? But anyway, yeah, on the podcast that Pat frequents, Castle Super Beast. I just want to, I want to stealth for long enough to stealth kill those guys. I just want to stealth kill those guys. Why does it have to be hard? me yours too but he was talking about um kenshi and about how like you can do anything you can go anywhere you can do whatever you want and he was like okay but what what do i do what am i supposed to be doing and the stream chat was just like anything you want and it's like no <laughs> that doesn't exactly make a good game you know like yes i will freely admit that dwarf fortress has so much shit in it it's like one of the biggest and most immersive games ever. It's also almost completely unplayable unless you started playing it in 2003 and know every input. And it's it's just that's the thing with PC gaming, you know. You'll always get more variety, versatility, more control, you get more freedom. But that, you know, that isn't free. You need to do shit around it. Fine. How's that do you? So yeah, in the other episode, I managed the other take of this episode, the first one, I managed to get all the way to here. Oh no, this is the second take of this episode. This is like essentially the fourth take. Can I get you guys to come over here, please? Thank you. So yeah, that's like the introduction to Berserker enemies. Uh, they dual wield axes and they have more, I think a little more health and they attack more aggressively. Oh yeah, I managed to get like a 74 combo while I was uh, grinding off screen. Alright, cool. Alright, it just took me 10 minutes, but, well 10 minutes in this episode. And like, I've been here for like 30 minutes, so... But we've advanced the story. One of the five. Don't get ahead of yourself here, dude. Ranger, we did it. <laughs> no honor our arrangement. Oh, don't you worry. War Chief Ratbag will make sure nobody gets in the way of your dirty schemes. I wouldn't worry about them. <laughs> Could I borrow you? Uh, 
chopper blade. They even have the goofy trumpets and trombones and saxophones. Yeah, like his power is seven total. <laughs> He's the strongest war chief by virtue of me having killed everyone else for him. Ratbag the Great and Powerful. All right. All right. Uh, more plot then. Oh yeah, let it be known. Uh, there's been a lot of dialogue that you, the viewers, have missed. Uh, on loading screens, you will randomly hear one of Talion's memories. I think you can also hear one of Calibrimbor's memories, but I don't know. Um, cool. Um, yeah, you can randomly hear memories from them. You can also uh, hear... Uh, Talon and Celebrimbor talking to one another uh, whenever you die and load back in on completing certain side quests, that sort of thing. The Dark Monument. Destroy the Gorthrar to draw forth the Black Captain. Let me just... You saw what these monsters are capable of. It is madness to stay here. Yes, but, but the rent is so cheap! Ready to pick that fight? That dude is so heroic and cool looking for like a guy who's like an escaped slave. The orcs are building a monument to honor Sauron. We have enough blasting powder to destroy it. Fine. I'll take it and I'll finish this. Not without me, you won't. But your only concern was saving your You may have superpowers, but consider this. I feel like helping. Let's go. I change my mind. What do you mean, change your mind? <laughs> I would be so much happier if you changed your mind. If I could do this by myself, I would trust you. I would trust it a lot more. Mary Jane Watson over here, you know. They're both redheads. And this game has Arkham Combat. You'll need to steal a cart of grog from the Uruk. It will make quite the trigger for the blasting powder. Let's move. Cracking the code. So. That doesn't sound good. So I kind of wanted to mention. Um, like. Obviously. The, ghouls the world is in fact mostly female. Major like there are more females in I think every species. Uh, but most writers are men. And so, a lot of, like, protagonists are men. Especially in older books, you know? Like, there's, like... And even with, like, female writers, like, there's, like, one female character in, like, Frankenstein. And you'll see this where, like, characters who are allegedly non-binary or shouldn't even have, like, a sex or gender... Uh, use male pronouns. Like, robots who are agender will still use male pronouns. Boo. Uh, and one thing about, like, Lord of the Rings is that I feel like Lord of the Rings is very intentionally about men. And that's a weird thing to say, maybe. But, like, consider this. Sailor Moon is intentionally about girls and women, you know? It is what you would call a girl show. It's a shoujo, even. But it's not just that it's, you know, about girls. Everyone in it is also, like, a role model for, for you know, women. Um, and maybe, like, women would get more out of it. 
And I feel like Lord of the Rings is the same thing for men. Like, all, most of the main characters are not men in Lord of the Rings because it is a, uh, you know, they're essentially just like the quote default gender because that's how a lot of people treat it. Um, <laughs> get his ass. I've got elf shot, right? Yeah, I do. I even the odds, but I want to see this fight play out. But I feel like, anyway, yeah, I feel like Lord of the Rings is like the same kind of genre as Sailor Moon, but for men. But for, like, and like, maybe that is a, that's a weird thing to say, and maybe that's even a weird way to put that. But like, every man in Lord of the Rings is essentially a icon, a role model, a, a monolith. Or they are a. Excellent, Talion. Now we must ensure our men can push the cart to the monument free from harm. Letting him talk there, sorry. Um, or they are cautionary tales, like Boromir's like, "Look, what if we did try this?" And everyone's like, "I don't, I don't know. That's not really." And they're like, "No, no, it's good." And and they try it, and they're like, uh, "No, you know, because you can't resist it, because that's the problem." Uh. Let's move. And it's the same. And then, like, Faramir tries it, and he learns the lesson from Boromir, and he's like, "It's you're right. We shouldn't we shouldn't play around with this ring. It's it's on another level. It's it's bigger than I thought. You know, it's it's a bigger deal." Um. And like, there's a lot of men, like today. Where I feel like you know. Even today, men still don't want to, like, publicly show affection to other men. Because, like, that's gay, you know? Like, you get men who don't want to eat seafood or, like, a cupcake with pink frosting because that's feminine. Obviously, that's... Those people are nuts. Those people are absolutely crazy. But, like, I just mean men who have been, like, socialized in a way where they don't really feel like... You know, showing affection to a man in the way that they would a woman like this also isn't uh like in the same context of like a man being nicer to a woman because he wants something from her what is that over there oh it's him duh But yeah, I feel like Lord of the Rings has a lot of, like, lessons, you know? Like, you can learn from Lord of the Rings in, in a way that, like, I don't think you could from, uh, like, Game of Thrones. Because Game of Thrones is meant to be, like, a straight-up history, you know? Like, if you were to base your character off of a, of a Game of Thrones character, I would... Like, I wouldn't want to see you around, uh, like, minors or women or anyone, you know? Like, I don't, I don't trust that for shit. But if someone were to base their personality off of a Lord of the Rings character, I feel like I could trust them at, at least a little bit, you know? Sorry, again, this is a weird topic and a weird way to put this, but I didn't exactly write out my stuff into a thesis here. I'm a Let's Player, trying to talk and play. But it's a thing where, like, um, I feel like Lord of the Rings is supposed to be about men, you know? It's supposed to be about men, men caring for another man in a non-romantic and non-sexual context as well. And I feel like a little knee-jerk towards that because I'm bisexual and a lot of people are like, are you friends with them? You fucking, you know? And, and it's weird to them because they just... Sometimes they don't know, but let's remember, I also lived through the early 2000s, and I had to put up with Fujoshi's. Push the cart beneath the bridge unseen. 
Uh, and if you don't know, those are just those girls who like yaoi. And if you don't know what yaoi is, it's Japanese anime gay porn. But, like, I had to live through, like, thousands and thousands of knee-jerk, like, oh, two men are friends? They must be fucking. We should write fanfiction immediately. I like that. And, like, man, just let men be friends, you know? Like, and Lord of the Rings is about that. Lord of the... Because, like, I... It's why I don't agree with shipping Sam or Frodo. Because, like, a man can care for another man in a, in a manner that is not sexual and not romantic, just purely platonic, purely friendly, and that can be great and that can be good and that can be fine, you know? And it should happen more. There's a lot that you can learn from Lord of the Rings. Uh, though, let's be clear here. While I do not ship Sam and Frodo, and I do not even think that they, like, are dating. Like, let's be clear here. Gimli and Legolas? Absolutely. Dude, Gimli's the only dwarf in the Undying Lands because Legolas built a boat by himself. Like, I think Legolas is, like, the last elf in Middle-earth before... Because everyone else went to the Undying Lands, and I think he was, like, the last elf there. And he built... Because he wanted to hang out with Gimli more, and he built a boat for Gimli and himself to, to cross into the Undying Lands. And he did that for Gimli. They did that together, you know? But if you wanted to play that as, like, they're, they are just really good friends. I would disagree with you in regards to Legolas and Gimli, but I do think that it is a good enforcement of, like, the strong themes of Lord of the Rings, of, like, male friendship, you know? Like, people talk about how, like, homogenous the cast for, like, Final Fantasy, f like, 15 is, for example. Uh, and to an extent, I'd ag I, I agree. Because uh, Final Fantasy 15 is about, like, four boys of the same nationality and race you know four males of their species but the thing is is that it's a it's it's what final fantasy is trying to talk about because like final fantasy like one enemy replaces another like other final fantasies are about like yes we are very intentionally all from very different cultures races and in some cases, like, species. And you got, like, weird dog men, or, or like a, like a... a tribute to darkness built by the blood of I don't even know... I don't remember what... Relish its destruction. Did, did they ever talk about what, like, Red 13 species is? Will soon fall. But you have, like, all of them teaming up because the evil is that big. There, but, like, Ranger. part of the thing of Final Fantasy XV is that the nature of it is about sins of the fathers. Only then can my men get into position to destroy the monument. Part of the nature is like about sins of the fathers, or now that their war chiefs have fallen by my hand. Sins of the fathers, and what's more, being like a good friend to someone. That was very clever. That was very clever of me. All right, anybody new? Bag? Yeah. He's got a thing. I should probably check that out. He's a cannibal, so maybe he'll eat his boss. Which could be a problem for me. But he's got a lot of weaknesses, so. There we go. Oh, it's good to have a controller that works, man. I love this game. But anyway, yeah, I'm on a long tangent to say that Lord of the Rings is supposed to be about men, you know? Like, you could conceivably have a... Uh, a 
like Lord of the Flies, for example. One day travel the Anduin. When Deerhire was grown, we would go together. And we would behold the pillars of the kings. I hope that Hirgon's people can escape. I do not know where you shall see your family again. The doom of man is beyond the vision of the elves. <laughs> But anyway, I feel like that's sort of used as an excuse because almost all of the main characters in this game are men. And I don't know if it has... I, I can't justify it. I, I, in fact, think it's one of the weaknesses of this. Because, like, Lord of the Rings does not have a lot of, like, cool female characters. I mean, every female character that it has is basically cool. Because, like, Galadriel, basically a superhuman demigod. But, like, as elves go, she's just about as normal as elves can be. Oh, those are my guys. Can I... Hi, I just... Sorry, I wanted to interrogate him. Oh, yeah. All right, we're dry. But, like, controversially, uh, Peter Jackson invented the elf Tauriel and put her in, in The Hobbit just so that there could be some female representation. And, like, it's one of the... It's, it's another thing that is, like, I'm not sure about this in The Hobbit, you know? Like, extending Bard's uh, backstory. And, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I almost feel is in The Hobbit to make it longer. Um, but I just, I just feel like this game would be an excellent time to put some more, like, cool female characters in. And like I said, I feel like almost a little disappointed that they don't, like, go for that, you know? Because, like, they so could. It would be very easy for them. There is, I think, I want to say, like, one cool female character. Yeah, this is, like, partially a revisit of my discussion from earlier uh, the very first episode where I talk about fridging because like I think that yes Talion's wife is killed primarily for his own character development and like to be honest like his son is too but I don't know you know there's no reason that rut row Yeah, like, there's no real reason that this game can't be about, uh, uh, what's her name? Eorith? Talion's wife. There's no real reason that it can't be about her. And I know that, like, allegedly we're using a bunch of Talion's cool ranger training to do stuff here. But, like, we're also mostly using Celebrimbor's radical, awesome, like, super ancient elven lord powers. Oh, that ain't good. Oh. Well, thank you, Sauron, for leaving those there for me. Payload race. I guess it's just a regular payload map, huh? We made these Talion push animations, and by God, you're going to see them. Says Monolith, the developers of this game. This is Monolith, right? But yeah, like, I... Maybe I would even like this game more if it had, like, a cool... 
like look at that sort of thing. Like I, I like the idea of Talion's wife being the one who gets Celebrimbor and and takes over and becomes the new like super beast for for Mordor. You know, there are some cool female characters in this game, but uh, like, what's his name's wife is there, and she's currently just like either been a damsel or complained about cool action times, which like. The thing is, when you have a character complain about doing the story, like doing the main quest, you, you almost just want to disagree with them, you know? Because it's like, no, I want to play the video game. Is that what you tell them? Men need hope. I just gave them what they asked for. Then your men need their leader. And again, like everyone in, in Mordor is morally gray or evil. To these outcasts, it seems I am less of a monster in death than I was in life. It is the Black Hand and his captains who are the true monsters. They will return, and when they do, these men will die. And no matter what, no matter what you do, you'll never be as bad as them, right guys? Let's throw some points around here, shall we? I can grab that. Why not? But yeah, that's my musings on this. Um, the game is still very good, but it... I feel like it doesn't do enough new. Like, Keller Brimbor, like, he sounds and kind of looks like Elrond. And Talion is just Aragorn, if he was also Geralt of Rivia. And also if he was... Uh, and also if he was like a, a Assassin's Creed assassin. Um, but yeah, that's that's just some of my musing on this. Uh, but that's this episode. Pardon me for having the episode be way more salty. Uh, PC gaming, you know. Uh, but I've been Alfred. This has been Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. I hope you all have a good day. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.